Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 17 of the Legal Day Challenge. Hit the like button, hit subscribe button, drop me in Discord. Let me know what you think about today's poem. Uh, today we have, uh, I guess that's what we were saying yesterday, right? This is going to be just part two of, of yesterday's poem, though maybe it's a little bit different. We'll see. Yeah, hope everyone's doing okay. Today, I, my workout was, it's okay. I, um, as far as marathon training, I am running basically every day. Maybe not quite yet. I think this week is five days a week. And then in like two or three more weeks, it's going to be six days a week. So, um, so yeah, that that is that. It is what it is, uh, for better or for worse. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about it. But, but today, I, I just ran uh, five miles. Nothing too crazy. Three of them at tempo marathon pace but, and, and two easy. So still a little tired. I took a nap. So, yeah, but let's take a look at today's poem. We have 3202. Find the maximum length of valid subsequence 2. Okay, so hit all the like buttons if you want to see all this stuff. All right, so, uh, okay, so we have sub 0 plus sub 1 uh, mod k is equal to this thing. I think this is basically the same as yesterday, right? Except for now instead of um, mod 2, I think it was mod 2. Yeah, it was mod 2, and we kind of the way that we did it is that we kind of skipped the dynamic programming interpretation and we just did it with uh, analysis, which is fine for that problem. But this one, it's harder to do. Uh, K can be pretty big, 10 to the third, but N is small relatively. But so you can, uh, N is 10 to the third, so, uh, or a thousand. So you can maybe, you know, I mean, I, I don't always like to jump straight to the constraints and work our solutions backward, but it is just an idea to, to kind of think about the possibilities. And in this case, for example, n times k would be good enough. Um, I think that idea is a little bit... Um, hmm, uh, I think you just have to be really careful about what, what happens, right? And I think similar to yesterday, uh, and we really did it for k is equal to 2 yesterday, So, but we can play around with what k is equal to 3 mean, right? Uh, and then just kind of work through maybe a case or two. I guess this one is actually uh, k is equal to 3, so we could work through it. And then now, let's just say we start with the number 1. Um, okay, so similar to what we had yesterday for each number, we just want to say, well, for each number, um, what sequence can we add it to, right? And, what, and uh, yeah, and because the k is equal to 3, we can, there, there are three distinct possibilities in terms of um, this thing, right? That means that you have some two adjacent numbers, is it, mod k is equal to some constant that's through the entire subsequence. And for k is equal to 3, there's really only two cases. And I just call this i and i plus 1, right? Uh, there are only three cases, right? It's either, well, this is equal to 0, this is equal to 1, and this is equal to 2. Hopefully, you're following along. And we can think about how, how to th think about this, but of course, it, we can really make a thousand different, uh, uh, you know, we can we have to generalize it a little bit, right? We can't just make a thousand of these if statements or something like that, and then, you know, maybe you can, but but that would be, uh, at least for me, way, even if you're able to do it, it would be very error prone, and maybe you could write a program to write a program, but anyway, that is beyond... Um, <laughs> the idea here, right? Okay, but it's it's still worthwhile to kind of play around with some real numbers. And for us here, let's say we have one, right? One. What does that mean? That means that one. Well, in this case, um, let's say we have the the um the, the, the sequence to or subsequence or whatever to analyze. And f for i, well, the uh, sorry for this number one, you either have it this number or this number. So maybe another way to think about this is that uh, for an i, this would be i minus 1 and i, right? Maybe that's slightly better, honestly, right? Um, because then now we have the sub sub i, right? Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, and now there's like some weird things that you may have to kind of do to kick it off, which is fine. Which is that, okay, now let's say we, we substitute as 1, right? Then now what does that look like? Um, because the first number is 1, that's in case you were wondering why. Uh, then what does that look like? Well, well, that means that this, um, 
you know, that means that this is going to be uh, some uh, under mod, of course, uh, k minus 1, oops, k minus 1, Ooh, I have caps lock on, k minus 1, you know, this is going to be, you go to 0 and that makes sense, and here, this is going to be k, um, is it plus 1 or uh, minus 2, technically minus 2, but it goes to say plus 1, right? Uh, but in this case, because, wait, is that right? Uh, am I doing it wrong? Maybe, maybe it is minus 2 to be more, is it? Hmm, man, I'm really bad at this, but, but you can see my idea, right? I mean, and the reason, and the way to do it is just subtract one from both sides. So actually, they're both wrong, which is why I got a little bit confused. It's just k, right? I, I don't know why I didn't do it. Just subtract one from both sides, and you see that k is equal, uh, k mod k is equal to zero, and then that's how you get it. And then here, again, sub, you know, you have some x, so then now you subtract two from both sides, so this is going to be negative one and... Um, yeah, and then you just have k minus, wait, what? Yeah, uh, you subtract two from uh, both sides, so this is going to be x minus 1 mod k is equal to 0, like we, we could write it out, right? Right, uh, after subtracting two from both sides, and then, uh, yeah, and then you put the one back on the other side, and then x uh, mod k is equal to 1, and that is, of course, now you fit in any x k plus 1, it's going to be the case, right? Um, that's, it. that's the thing inside, not to be confused with the thing that we have outside on the plus 1. Anyway, so what does this mean actually, right? So taking that as whole, that's what the last number, the number, uh, the subsequent i minus 1 has to be, right? Straightforward so far. But, but then now, in a recursive way, we can make it represent more. And what I mean by that? What I mean by that is that, okay, well, yeah, okay, we could have one number that goes here, but, okay, let, let's say now, in a recursive way, now, uh, okay, so let, let, me, let me write some notes so that's a little bit confu less confusing. You go one, and then now we go previous number, previous current is equal to, say, k minus one, right? In this case, uh, let's just fill it in. k is equal to three, k k is equal to 3, which implies that this is 2, right? So then now the current is equal to 2, and then you just kind of do the same thing over again. But keeping in mind that at here, we don't care. What we care about is the longest subsequence that has the last element be 2, right? And that's it. And of course, if you say it that, that way, and if you say it out loud, um, there's only a unique answer for this, right? There's no, like, branching, you may, well, because... It's just the longest subsequence where the last number is 2. It's not 2 or 5 or 7 or 8. It's just exactly 2, at least under the mod k, right? Because, yeah, you know, if k is 3, then technically the last element could be 2, 5, uh, 8, dot, dot, dot. But they all map to 2 under mod 3. So, yeah. So then now, actually what you want is then, now, given this 1, all that means is that we... Uh, we've... Uh, for um, for a valid subsequence where the I don't know the is that, the, um, the the value is zero, then then given current is equal to one, we want to put this in the longest uh, put this at the back of the current longest subsequence. where the last element is well in this case k minus one or or two right and that's it and then we go think about it backwards again right um well this is two the longest sub valid subsequence where the last element is two then yeah then you just kind of work backwards right because if this is now two then the previous number beyond that has to be, what does that have to be on? It's going to k minus 2, which in this case is 1. So then now it should look like 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, which kind of makes sense, right? Because if you, then now every two adjacent numbers sums to 3. I mean, this is under, this is after you mod it. Uh, and I said under mod, but maybe that's not quite, I mean, it is quite 
precise bit. I think people might not always know what that means, right? So that's basically what this means. And that's really the idea that, uh, I mean, I'm not going to, I mean, we can go over other cases, but for now, I feel like you can, you have the tools to kind of build that out, right? Okay. So that means that we just have to structure, um, Yeah, we have to. Hmm. Maybe I'm a little bit messy here, actually. But. Because the way that we did it this way, maybe is a little bit not quite performing. But mm. anyway, so then now maybe, yeah. Now we can solve for each of these, right? So basically for, um, I, I, I wish they have a name for this because uh, I just keep on, I call it quote unquote the value, but let's just call it V, right? For V in range of K, meaning that solve for every, um, every uh, value, they, uh, they, 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 they don't have a name for it, so I don't know. From zero to K minus one inclusive, right? And then now here, what do we do? Well, for each one, then that means that we just basically keep track of, like, say, the longest is equal to um, zero times k, right? And all this is is a longest su subsequence where the last element is, um, well, let's say, long sub i is i, right? And then now we can go for each item uh, in nums one by one. We can say for x in nums, uh, we can say longest, because um, we're trying to sum to v. Remember, y u has to be v, right? So that means that um, x plus some previous number is equal to v, right? except we don't know what the previous number is. So we subtract x on both sides to figure it out. So this kind of uh, keep in mind that this is not code, by the way. I just kind of write it so you could see it. Um, but yeah, that means that you subtract x from both sides. So you have previous is equal to v minus x, and then that's it, right? So maybe I can remember that, right? Previous is equal to v minus x, right? And then um, longest of the current value is equal to max, max if my m key works, longest of x, which means that it stays the same, or the longest of the previous plus one, right? And that's it. And then uh, maybe we just have a best variable and then best is equal to max, best, uh, longest. And then that should be good, maybe, hopefully. Uh, but that's the idea anyway. Okay, maybe... Oh, I forgot the mod. My apologies. Uh, I, I didn't mean... Yeah, we, I mean, we write it here, then we have to mod it every time. So actually we can maybe write something like... Um, did I define n? I did not define n. We just pre-mod everything, that's all. Uh, and we also have to do some mod map. I just forgot to write it out, honestly. Uh, okay, because it's this, but then here we wanted to mod. Uh, I want to also point out a caveat here is that in Python, negative, if this is a negative value, it actually, with v minus x is negative, actually maps to zero to k minus one anyway. Um, in other languages, it is, I don't know if it's often enough to say it's often, but it is not necessarily the same thing, so you have to be careful. I thought I could do this, but, um, but I guess I have to write max of this. Um, yeah, that's fine, right? Uh, hmm, I thought it takes like a thing, but hmm, okay. Either way, it's not a big deal. But yeah, uh, and that looks okay for these two, so let's give it a YOLO submit. But before you give it a YOLO submit, actually, uh, because usually I, I say it's fine. That I, uh, The reason why I don't think about it is because it's linear, um, and linear is going to be usually the lower bound because you have to read the data unless you it's some structure in some weird way. But in this case, let's go over the analysis real quick. This is uh, O of N, right? Um, because, I mean, this is just O of N. There's nothing to say about that. This is O of K times n, so this is k times n. Um, technically, k times k times k plus k times n, if you want to, really want to be precise. Um, and yeah, 
And of course, given that K is a thousand and N is a thousand, so like it's a million, it should be okay for us to YOLO. So let's, let's actually YOLO and submit it. And there we go. That's all we have for today. Uh, yeah, I don't think I have anything more to add, but let's check out what past Larry did. Uh, oh, huh, well, I did it twice for some reason. But uh, what did I do? I mean, I basically did the same thing for each K, I, I solve for it. Um, I used the counter instead, which I guess is a little bit slower, but uh, I mean, I guess it is. Uh, oops. Uh, what about the second time I solved it? Oh, I guess this is just explanation. Wait, why did I submit again? I don't know. Yeah, either way, I mean, yeah. Uh, that's it. That's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. And yeah. Uh, man, I'm passing out. That's all I have. Stay good, stay healthy, take your mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.